Okay, what I want to do is just kind of explain real quick uh, how these guns differ from each other. Uh, number one, this is a, this is a maximum two inch long fastener that is 18 gauge. That's that 18 GA. Uh, so I have to buy uh, an inch and a quarter or no more than two inch nail that is no more than 18 gauge because uh, it's got to be able to fit the nail. So I would just strictly buy an 18 gauge nail that is no longer than two inches for this gun. And this is called a pen nailer. It fires smaller, thinner nails. This one is another, it's a finished nailer, but we call it a brad nailer because this one uses 16 gauge two and a half, up to two and a half inch nails. So again, the 16 gauge nail is a little bit thicker than the 18 gauge nail. So I gotta make sure that I'm using the right nail with a proper gun. These are both pneumatic guns, okay? So they fire off compressed air. Okay, so now we've got our door frame installed to our opening. What we have to do is we gotta put the casing on the other side. So when we do this, we work in the same fashion. And I wanted to physically show you this so we can, uh, when, you, when we talk about it, you'll have, you'll have an idea of what we're actually discussing. Uh, we're gonna put the casing, this is casing, it's two and a quarter inch wide casing, and it's a colonial style. This uh, happens to be pre-primed, so it'll be ready for paint. I don't have to prime it. All I have to do is put uh, putty on over the nail holes, sand that down, caulk my seams or joints, let that cure for 24 hours, and then I can paint over it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, again, we talked about working from bottom to top and then around the door to finish everything. It's the same process on the install. So I'm going to use an 18 gauge pneumatic finish nailer to nail on my trim to my actual jam first. So what I'm doing is nailing through the thin side of my casing into my door jam and I'm leaving an, an 1 8 inch reveal from the edge of my jam to the edge of my casing. I'm using or I'm leaving one eighth of an inch so that I can caulk that gap. So what I'll do is carefully place my pin nailer here, here at the bottom and I'll nail that. And then I'm gonna ride this all the way up, working from top to bottom and making sure each time I nail, I'm maintaining this one eighth of an inch reveal line. Um, this jam happens to have a scribed uh, reveal line for me so I can place the edge of my casing right on that uh, reveal line and just nail it. And again I'm gonna work myself from bottom to top nailing this in and I'm following my reveal line all the way up making sure I stay on it and I'm real consistent with it. I'm using this 18 gauge pin nailer so that it's a really thin nail, it won't split the edge of my wood. Okay, I'll use the larger nail gun to nail the outside of the trim to the actual stud behind it to keep it in place. So now I'm going to work around it, okay? I've, I've done my side piece, which is my latch side. Now I'm going to do my top piece, and then I'm going to put on my uh, hinge side piece, making sure. One thing is for sure, if I want a true 90 in this corner, when I cut, this is a 90. So in order to, the two miter cuts, this is a 45, and the other one at the top is going to be cut at a 45 degree angle. If I want those two to match up tight, then guess what? This side has to be plumb, and that's, that piece up there has to be level in order for those two 45s to meet up properly and not have a big gap at either the top or the bottom of my trim. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll take the top piece of casing, and we'll place it up here. And if this piece is perfectly plumb, and then the top piece is level, my 45 is going to meet up really well where it needs to. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll hold this piece up here and I'll nail it in so I can show you, okay? And one thing 
you want to make sure is leave this piece loose. Don't nail it all the way at the top until you get the uh, top piece up to it and nailed into your frame. So let's go over that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place this piece right in the corner, right where it goes, and up against my frame. And then I'm going to nail this into my frame. Okay? And I'll probably just, I'll put a couple in here. And don't be alarmed about too many nails because I can use putty right over them and not worry about it, not even worry about seeing the actual nail head, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maintain my reveal line here all the way around as well. So I'm going to get this top piece on my reveal line, hold it in place, nail it, and I'm going to work my way down again a little bit maybe about a foot at a time, hold it in place, nail it, then I'm going to come to the end. And I have to adjust it a little bit, hold it in place, nail it. Maybe one more. There we go. Now, one thing I have to do, and a good little trick, is to take either, I'll show you both methods. You can take a shim, and put it up in here behind this to hold these two pieces flush together. So when I slide that behind there, it's going to hold these two pieces out to where they're perfectly flush. That's what we want. Now I can take my pin nailer and I can nail up here in the corner and I can nail these two pieces together so that they stay nice and flush after I take the shim out. Okay? Doing the same concept on this side, I'm going to put my casing in, and this casing's already pre-cut. So just remember that in order to make a perfect 90, I got to have two uh, really good 45 degree cuts, miter cuts, and each piece that I'm putting in, this piece has got to be plumb, perfect. This piece has got to be level, or that 45 is not going to meet up very good. And this all started by making sure our frame was perfectly plumb on the hinge side, level at the head, and then square in the corner. When I do that, I can achieve good corners here. And that's what we've done. That's a good corner. I can easily throw some putty in that corner and sand it, or I can caulk it. It's whatever your preference is. To me, it doesn't matter, but I, in my opinion, would rather put some putty in there and sand it so I have zero gap. Okay, so now what we did was we put the last piece of casing on here. Remember, we've got to have our reveal line. That's one eighth of an inch from the edge, the inside edge of the uh, jam, to the uh, inside edge of my casing. Again, this is my casing. Pre-primed, two and a quarter wide, colonial casing, and it comes in all kinds of different styles, shapes, uh, if I want to stain it, it's going to come in clear with nothing on it, just bare wood, okay? But lastly, what we need to demonstrate is using the actual brad nailer, and this is still a finish nailer, it's a straight finish nailer, and it takes 16 gauge and up to 2.5 inch nails. We have to use a longer nail on the outside of our casing so that we can nail this to the stud behind the wall. And all we're going to do is using the straight finish nailer is nail the bottom so I can hit the uh, bottom of the frame into the stud and I'm going to go around and just nail all the way around my frame and I can put a couple in here at top and then I'm going to go down the side here then I'm just going to nail around here and finish up and again, I'm nailing my actual casing to my jack stud and king stud, which is the framing around the actual uh, door opening. 